Hi, and welcome to a VexBarn video about the 1987 Ardent Titan graphics supercomputer. This video is not about the hardened software of this system, which was quite amazing for 1987. If you haven't seen it, I really highly recommend that you watch a video we did earlier on the Titan first. You can find the link to that video in the description below. This video is about how we finally managed to record the video signal from the Titan for use in future videos. If you watch the first video we did on the Titan, you'll have noticed that we recorded the monitor using a camera, which is not ideal. Um, it leads to a lot of quality issues. It turns out that the Titan generates a video signal that is difficult to capture with modern equipment. First of all, the signal it generates it is different from a normal VGA signal. Normal VGA signals use five signal wires, three for red, green and blue, and two for vertical and horizontal sync signals. That signal is known as RGBHV, so red, green, blue, horizontal, vertical. The Titan outputs a signal that's known as sync on green, or RGSB, which means that the two sync signals are combined into the green video channel. This is possible because the sync pulses are active when the video signal is blanked. Now, we have several modern monitors, including some LCD screens, that are capable of displaying RGSB signals, and that should be capable of handling the 1280 by 1024 at 60 Hz resolution that the Titan puts out. However, not all of these monitors are capable of properly recognizing and displaying the signal. To find out why that is, we need to look at the signal from the green channel with an oscilloscope and compare the timings with the VISA monitor timing standard for this resolution at this frequency. Our test signal is the Ardent boot prompt, which as you can see is a monochrome image. There's a dark black border around the image and then in the middle there's a grey area that's the terminal window. And then at the top there's a bit of white text. All channels should output the same signal because it's monochrome, except that the green channel should also have the sync pulses on it. Here you see two of the channels on the oscilloscope. The red line is the green plus sync signal and the yellow line is the blue signal. You can't make out any details yet. Voltage levels are a little bit high, but that's because we haven't properly terminated the signals. If we zoom in, you can see that the refresh rate is almost exactly 60 Hz, which is fine. You can also clearly distinguish the different voltage levels. On the blue channel, which is shown in yellow, from low to high you can see the vertical blanking period, a plateau around it that corresponds with the black border around the terminal area, another plateau for the grey background of the terminal area, and high spikes for the white in the characters. You see the same levels on the green channel, shown in red and partially hidden behind the blue channel, and in addition you see the negative going sync pulses there. If we zoom in further to look at the vertical blanking time, we notice two things. First of all, the horizontal sync pulses are still present in the area that should be blanked. We can also see that the vertical blanking time is shorter than it should be. Video signals should be blanked for 42 lines, and we see that they're only blanked for 32 lines. We'll now drop the blue channel for clarity and zoom in further. Here we see that the vertical sync pulse time is in accordance with the VISA standard at 47 microseconds. Zooming in further again, we see that the total time for each line is a bit longer than it should be. It should be 15.63 microseconds and it's closer to 15.9, which explains the shorter vertical blanking time. Zooming in one final time reveals that the horizontal sync pulse is almost twice as long as the VISA standard says it should be. Now it's not too surprising that these timings are off, because the Titan was built almost 10 years before the VISA standard was adopted. It does pose a problem for us though, because the video capture device we use, the StarTech USB 3 HD Cap, refuses to play well with these timings. So, time to experiment a bit. As you see here, plugging the RGSB signal from the Titan directly into the capture device doesn't work. Thinking that we might need to provide a proper RGBHV signal to the capture device, we added a sync splitter, which removes the sync signal from the green channel and produces the normal H and V sync signals. As you can see, that also didn't work. 
we then decided to try a VGDI, VGA to HDMI converter and feed the HDMI input into the capture device. It didn't work with the RGSB signal from the Titan at all, but with the sync separator in there we got some kind of image, albeit heavily distorted. Now we had exhausted the tools in our possession, so we started looking at other options. Our attention was drawn to a device called the Open Source Scan Converter, or OSSC, which is popular in the retro game console community. We got ourselves one of these and used it to convert the RGSB signal to HDMI. Now as you can see this works a lot better, but for some reason the green channel is shifted about halfway up. We can filter out the green tint, but we would end up losing all of the detail in the upper half of the signal range for the green channel, which is not acceptable. Adding the sync splitter results in a much better result, with only a little bit too much green and a bit of unwanted signal to the left and right of the picture. To remove these two unwanted issues, we turn to Adobe Premiere. Removing the unwanted portion of the signal is easy, it's just a matter of cropping the video a bit. Now, the green. Using the Lumetri scope tool on the image, we see that the black level is close to zero on the red and blue channels, but it's about 18 to 19 on the green channel. Adding a levels effect, we then set the input black level for the green channel to 19. The image looks about much better and the Lumetri scope tool confirms this. We're now quite happy with the image quality and intend to use this setup in a future video showing off a very special early version of the MATLAB software and a recreation of the vibrating L-shaped membra membrane um, which plays an important role in MATLAB. Now we'll take a look at the system booting. So this blue pattern screen is part of the self-test of the graphics subsystem. When that's done we go into the prompt. There's a small period where there's no video output there which is why the um, video capture cuts out for a bit. The help command shows you all the different commands you can enter at the prompt and these are the NVRAM settings and now we boot. Again, no output for a bit and then we start loading Unix from the disk. Now we, the terminal screen gets resized as Unix boots and it takes a while before the output appears again. A bit of information about the hardware and versions root file system check. And we're in single user mode. From here we can initialize the system into multiple user mode. We'll skip the checks of all the extra file systems. and everything gets mounted. Network is starting. And now we log in. And then we start X Windows. So here's the typical X Windows background with a dot pattern which doesn't come across very well in the capture. And there we see the first windows opening. 
and I'm going to skip ahead in a little bit, set a few things up, and when we come back we'll start MATLAB, which is now. So here's version 3.5 of MATLAB. And I'm going to run a program that will create the vibrating membrane. Now one thing to be aware of is that when this version of MATLAB came out, on all other platforms, the type of line graphics that you see now was the only type of 3D graphics that MATLAB was capable of. And again, we're skipping ahead a little bit. So what you're about to see now was absolutely unique for MATLAB on this machine at the time. These types of shaded graphics. And here is the vibrating MATLAB diaphragm. As I said in the beginning, uh, I intend to make a separate video that details how this diaphragm vi uh, vibrating membrane was created. But for now, this is what I wanted to show you. So thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, check out our website at www.vaxbarn.com or leave a, video, um, leave a comment to this video. By the way, I'm using the knob box now to rotate the diaphragm and enlarge it. Do that all in real time.